Most players are either good with their irons or good with their driver. Very rarely are they good with both. Now, the reason for this is because these two clubs require different impact positions, but people very rarely talk about what are the differences between an iron impact and a driver impact. So, Let's start with it. Let's jump into what an iron impact looks like. Whenever we're hitting an iron, we're hitting it off the ground. So in order for us to hit this ball successfully with an iron, what are we looking to do? Well, we are looking to hit the ball and then the ground. We are looking to take a divot after the golf ball. Now, how do we do that? What does the impact position look like with an iron in order to achieve it? Well, if I get into this impact position, what we will see is we'll have 90% of our weight, 80 to 90% of our weight on our left side and our left ear, will be bang in line with the golf ball. That is what we are aiming to do, and the club will have some shaft lean. Now, the reason why we align the ball underneath the left ear is because the left armpit slash left shoulder joint is the lowest part of our swing. So if we can align the ball with our left ear at impact, that's gonna give us enough room to where we can hit the ball, continue to hit down, and take that divot after the golf ball. So now let's take a look at a driver impact position. And obviously it is going to be different to an iron because we are trying to achieve a different outcome. With an iron, we are trying to compress the ball, hit down. Our angle of attack is going to be down on the golf ball. With a driver, we're trying to hit level to slightly up. If we can hit up on the ball, we're gonna optimize out our drives, ultimately hit them a lot better. So the impact position has to look different because we're trying to achieve a different position. So with a driver, again, we will see majority of our weight on our lead leg. From there, we will roughly see an impact the left shoulder joint, the left arm pit, be in line with the ball, and we will see the hands with only maybe one or two degrees of shaft lean. So pretty much dead straight, maybe a fraction bit of shaft lean right there. My head is behind the ball, and as you can see, again, I've still got some right bend, maybe a little bit more with driver in this position. But ultimately, this has put my whole body a little bit further behind the ball to where I can hit up on it. So with that being said, the ball relative to our body is a lot further forwards with driver. And I think most people know that. Obviously we have less shaft lean as well. So now we understand what impact looks like with a driver. We also understand now what it looks like with an iron. Now we've got to talk about what setup position is going to allow us to achieve these optimal impact conditions for both an iron and a driver. How can we set up in the most efficient way possible to produce the best results? So with an iron, we are going to have roughly our stance width to where the edges of the shoulders line up with the center of the ankles. Now from there, we're gonna feel 50-50 to maybe slightly on our left side. Again, that's gonna promote us shifting our weight forward so we can get that ball, then ground contact. You might find a lot of golfers, they, you know, they find it a lot easier to hit their irons well if they're maybe 60-40 favoring their lead leg. Once we've done that, everything now is to do with ball position and shaft lean. So in this spot right here, we know that at impact with an iron, we're trying to have it roughly underneath our left ear. So we need to position it underneath our left ear at address. This is gonna put the ball forwards enough to where we can have a great weight shift with a little bit of right bend, but also back enough to where we can hit ball then ground and have a descending blow. The biggest issue I see with players that struggle with irons is they put the ball way too far back. Now, here's the thing. Why does this cause issues? Well, you go to the top, you shift. Now my head is way too far forwards. The lowest point of my swing is underneath the left armpit. So now that is a good sort of foot past the golf ball. As a result, if I was to swing down and do nothing, you can see that as I get to that point, the club is too high. So either one of two things are gonna happen. I'm gonna back out of it or I'm gonna throw my angles out both of which are going to cause poor shots. So make sure once you got that good stance width, you get that ball position underneath that left ear. We do not want to be seeing it go too far back. Conversely, we don't want it going too far forwards. Underneath the left ear is perfect. Now, a second cue that I like to see players do, and again, this promotes this shaft lean and ball then ground contact, is just by having the lead arm in the club in one straight line. Again, you might have it a little bit less, but for players that are definitely struggling with their iron strike, I do just recommend and having that left arm in the club in one straight line. Again, this is gonna put you into a good position to where when you do shift, you get into a good impact, you can return it back to a spot where you have some good shaft lean. So now let's jump in and take a look at what the driver setup position needs to be for optimal results. Now, like I said, in the impact, we're trying to achieve a different impact position. We're trying to hit up. So obviously our setup is going to differ. So the first thing that I like players to do is stand wider than they would with an iron. Now this is for a couple of reasons. We want to stand wider, number one, for support. This is the longest club in our bag. It's gonna be moving the fastest around our body. We need a slightly wider stance to support that. The second reason, and this is crucial, is that our, when we widen our stance, you can see this drops my head 
behind the ball. Again, if we think back to what impact looks like with an iron, ball position is under the left ear. With a driver, it's underneath the left armpit. So part of that is obviously moving the ball position further forwards, but actually if we can widen our stance, it's gonna make it way easier to stay behind the ball with the upper body, which allows us to have that beautiful ascending blow onto the ball. So what is a good guide for the stance width? Well, if you line the edges of your shoulders up just inside your ankle joints, that is going to be a great guide for you. And if, now, once you've done that, as you can see, my upper body is now behind the ball. Once I've done that, I just wanna feel like I've got a little bit of tilt just away. You're gonna be absolutely perfect. Don't go too crazy with it though. I see some people go way too crazy, take it way too literal, and then from there, that causes more harm than good. Conversely, I see this one all the time, players go this way, and that is a one-way street to hitting a, a beautiful old slice. We do not wanna be doing that. So about six degrees of tilt, which is the one minute hand on a clock is perfect. Now, this is the key. Only once you've done those two factors, do we then look at ball position? I see so many people uh, look at ball position first and then they add in their tilts and then it ruins it. And again, we're using the upper body as our reference guide, just like we did with the iron. So once we've got that great stance width, a little bit of tilt, what are we seeing for ball position? We want to see the ball position underneath the left armpit at address. That's a great guide for the majority of players. From there, once it's underneath the left armpit, we want to be seeing roughly the hands level to maybe a fraction behind the ball with driver. We definitely don't want to be pushing it too far forwards, but we also don't want to be having it too far back behind you. This is going to allow us, when we get that shaft lean in the right position, again, just like the iron, to return it back to that good spot where we have a fraction bit of shaft lean and the ball is somewhere underneath your left armpit slash left shoulder joint. So that's the setup for the irons on the drivers. Hopefully you can see the big visual differences between the two. Now let's jump into a great swing thought, an overall swing thought for the iron and for the driver. So the key concept we're gonna talk about is head position. And again, this is gonna be a great swing thought, not only for the irons, but also for the driver. So starting with the irons, what do we wanna see with our head position through the swing? Well, when we obviously are setting up, we know that the ball wants to be underneath the left ear at address and by the time we get back to impact it wants to be again somewhere underneath or slightly maybe just outside of the left ear so with that being said we don't want to be seeing a huge amount of head movement with this swing when it comes to an iron one of the biggest issues i see is players they laterally move off the ball way too much and as a result of this this creates a lot of inconsistencies especially in low points where they start to hit the ball when players move way off now either they stay back and they hit it fat or they have a big lunge forwards and again this is messing up your swing plane your strike and all these other factors so I just want to take you through a three-step process that's just going to teach you how to move your head how to move your upper body so very simply, all we're going to do is start nice and tall, pop the club across our shoulders, feet starts width apart, and then from there, just turn back and forth, standing straight upright. What you'll notice, and mainly focus on the backswing, what you'll notice is my head isn't moving laterally. It is turning, but it's not moving laterally. So if I position that alignment stick underneath my left ear, where is it roughly staying? Well, it's pretty much staying over that alignment stick. Obviously, my head is turning, but it's, it's, it's not moving laterally. Now, once you've done that a couple of times and you've got that sensation, then what I want you to do is get into your golf posture and again, have that same feeling of that left ear staying over the alignment stick and you just turning back nicely. And again, this is creating what we class as a nice centered pivot. And a centered pivot is crucial for great iron play. Once you've done that a couple of times and now you've done stage two, which is turning in this position, then place the club on the ground normally. And then from there, do a nice swing, keeping that left ear over that orange alignment stick. This is gonna put you in a great position to where you're staying nice and centered. If you make a swing and either you look on video, you look in the mirror in front of you, or you just feel it, you can see, oh, my left ear's moved way off that alignment stick. You know you've moved laterally, and as a result, that's gonna make you downswing, have to have a huge compensation back to the left, which is gonna be very hard to time. So once you've done that a couple of times, then what you're gonna do is go ahead and hit a shot. Use some sort of feedback mechanism, whether it's the alignment stick, a camera, anything like that. And again, we're focusing on trying to keep that left ear over the ball in the backswing. This is gonna make it way easier in the downswing to then line that left ear up in a great position at impact. Let's give it a go for you here. So I'm gonna set up to the ball, got the left ear over the orange alignment stick. Then from there, I'm gonna hit, feeling like it stays over the alignment stick. So as you can see, really nice strike there, a little baby draw. Who doesn't like a baby draw? And I kept that left ear over the alignment stick. 
So to keep it consistent, our driver swing thought is again, gonna be focused on the head, but in a slightly different way. We're not really gonna be focusing too much on the backswing. We're gonna be focusing on the downswing with the driver. So as we know, our head is going to be a long way behind the ball at impact and also at address with the driver. Why? Because we are trying to orientate that ball as close as we can underneath the left armpit slash left shoulder joint at address and also at impact. So. What is one of the biggest issues I see with golfers, especially who are struggling with, say, slices or just contact in general with the driver? Well, in the downswing, they make a great backswing, and in the downswing, their head moves forwards towards the ball. Now, quite often, this is in an effort to try and meet the ball, because one of the biggest issues I see with players is they get the ball way too far forwards in their stance. So, with this being said, when you understand the concept that actually we want to stay behind it and hit up, that's part of it, but now we've got to give you some drill to train this new motion. So. When we get to the top, we want to be feeling like our head stays back and behind the ball. And actually, sometimes we tend to find that if I was to draw a line on my left ear at address, and then I was to get all the way back to impact, we would see a lot of the best drivers in the ball actually have their head further behind, a good sort of golf ball behind that line with retrospect to where it was at impact. Now, why is this? Well, they are adding what we class as right bend, which is where the right shoulder drops. This also allows them to swing a little bit more from the inside, but as you can see, it also allows them to hit up on it. So I've got two drills for you. One of them you need a buddy, one of them you don't. The first one where you need a buddy is you're gonna set up your golf ball and they're just gonna hold an alignment stick or a golf club just on the left side of your ear. Now, as they do that, imagine that's there right now. If I go to the top and I move forwards and I lunge forwards, I'm obviously gonna hit that alignment stick or that golf club. So I wanna be feeling like as I swing down, I stay behind it. This allows me to get this right bend so the club can work from the inside and I can hit up on it producing optimal results. Now we don't always have somebody to practice with and also we need to develop this feeling out on the golf course. So the second drill is an awesome one. What you're going to do is set up in your posture then from there grab the golf club and hold it in front of your lead foot with your left arm, your lead arm fully extended. Now the key with this is we're not moving this around. We're keeping this as still as possible. We're going to set up with our little bit of tilt and our right hand is gonna replicate our golf club. We're gonna make a backswing and we're gonna make a downswing to where we're gonna underhand throw it and hit the top of our lead shoulder. Now, if we do this wrong, we're gonna see one of two results. If our head moves forwards, firstly, you're gonna see that your head's gonna get very, very close to your lead arm. Number two, as you move forwards, your hand's gonna work out. You might hit the golf club or you might swing too low and sort of hit your rib cage. You're gonna go here, feel like your head stays behind your left arm up to the top, hit the left shoulder. Now, as I do this, you can see if I was to then bring the club down, staying in this position, I'm gonna be in that great position to where I can hit up on the ball nicely. So this is a great drill in understanding how the head should move in the downswing for a driver. And then obviously we have our centered drill for the iron as well. Both are focusing on the head in two different ways. Both are fantastic swim thoughts that are gonna help you with your game. In order for you to be successful with your irons and your drivers, you must understand the impact position we're trying to achieve. If you can do this, then you're gonna realize that actually our setup positions are built to allow us to get into that great impact position and our swing thoughts with what we're gonna do with our head are also there to, do, to help us achieve this great impact position for either your irons or your driver. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a like and subscribe and I hope to see you back here soon.